Okay, hey all, uh, welcome to the next bit of the conference. Um, I hope you have enjoyed it so far. Uh, thank you all for taking time off your busy schedules to be here with us. Uh, we all really appreciate it. I'd like to thank our sponsors. Uh, you can see on, on, on the screen over there. Um, so uh, there's uh, eLearn e uh, Security. Um, uh, they, they are uh, running on the INE's uh, platform and they actually have, you can get started with them for free. Uh, we've also got Axonius, uh, they do asset tracking. So that's very important. You can't secure something if you don't know it exists. So well worth checking those out. There's also MongoDB, Juniper Networks, Corelight, Google, uh, we have Perkhole, our uh, bridge crew. Uh, definitely take take a look at all of them. Um, and yeah, the conference would not be as professional, big, nice um, as it is with without their support. Uh, if you're new to InfoSec, um, as I suspect um, many of you will be, uh, yeah, it's, it's always a good idea just to take a look at sponsors and see what they have to do. Um, what 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 they're all about, uh, because they can give you a bit of an idea of what what goes on in information security. Um, so yeah, we have uh, visual booths. Uh, you can go visit them there. Uh, other things that you want to do that you may want to do is go look at the villages, the CTFs. Uh, take take advantage. You hear uh, there's so much that that's been put on for you. Uh, go do all the things. Um, yeah, there's just so many amazing people, so many clever people that 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 you can bump into and and just pick their brains. Uh, so take advantage of it. And yeah, nice segue into introducing one very clever person who I've met recently, Rachel. Um, I'm going to to jump in um, to uh, to the blurb that that I've got here. Uh, let's see how quickly I can do this. Uh, Rachel Hopley. Uh, builds a more secure world one bit at a time by empowering others in their cybersecurity careers, so that's all you, um, across several vectors. Uh, professionally, she solves the immediate needs of her clients as the founder of RecruitBit Security, and while also giving significantly through pro bono service uh, to initiatives as the founder and co-chair of the Cybersecurity Council of Arizona, uh, Chair of the Workforce Readiness Initiative of the 2017 RAMS grant awarded to Arizona by the National Initiative of Cybersecurity Education, and a key contributor to the marketing initiatives of Workforce and Economic Development subgroup of Arizona cybersecurity team. Uh, previously, Rachel was the uh, Director of Communication for the National Association of Women MBAs Phoenix chapter. Okay, so also Rachel is a friendly, nice and passionate person. Um, I wish this talk was around when I was younger. Uh, she's not only a recruiter, but she's come into InfoSec from outside the industry. Um, and she's dealt with major changes uh, from, from moving from, from one industry to another. Uh, so she's got that to, 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 to share with you. Uh, we'll be having, or we should be having two QA sessions. Uh, so we may stop in the middle. So what I'd like you all to do is to drop some questions in the chat for me. If you can mark them with a capital Q before, um, that will help me just, they'll pop out and I can see them easily. Uh, not not urgent, but if, if you can. So uh, that's it. And yeah, without any more of me talking, let's hand it over to Rachel. Thanks, Alan. It's a pleasure to be here. And I also want to say thank you to you as well for uh, helping me prepare for today. You've been a, a great mentor, so thank you. And uh, this is OPSEC and OSINT to hack your job hunt at the Diana Initiative 2021. Let's spark a journey. So as always, uh, each instance and each interaction is unique. The specifics for each individual are extensive factors and, um, you know, it depends on factors as your stage in your career, your career goals and outside of autonomous en en entities. 
Please follow all applicable laws and code of conduct. And the information here is really uh, my opinion and only my opinion. So, uh, you know, newsflash, job hunting is hard. This talk might be a little hard, but that's not my goal. We are often harder on ourselves than we are on others. So please, please be gentle with yourself. And I also want to say that if you get turned down for a job, please remember that it's more about the company than it is about you. And your self-worth doesn't depend on your productivity or your employment. And sometimes it's okay to just be, to just exist. So who am I? I'm Rachel Harpley. My pronouns are they, she. I'm sharing my experiences from a decade in recruiting, seven years in technical recruiting, and five of those years have been focused on InfoSec, IT security, and cybersecurity. I will forever be captivated by patterns, symbolisms, plant, ocean life, heliophysics, and neurodiversity. I live on occupied land in the Southwest, and I'm also autistic. When I was young, I was the exceptional child. Now, as an adult, my doctor calls me a highly sensitive person, which for the record, I don't recommend calling someone, even though yes, many of my sensory functions are different than what's considered normal. In high school, one of my friends chided me calling me a chameleon. I didn't even realize what I was doing. A few decades later, I know that I was masking. Masking is the term where we either consciously or unconsciously artificially perform social behavior that is deemed more socially acceptable. For example, I slip into accents really easily when I hear them, and over the years I've contorted myself in many ways. But I think this is a significant contributor to me becoming a recruiter. When I was young, I was unemployed for many months, and I spent many months trying to get a job and many months failing. I know how hard it is and I want to make it easier for others. Now I got flack for this on Twitter because you know it was a tweet thread and not everybody was reading the full thread but I said it. Stop applying online. It's a hot take in an industry where most of the tenured people say just apply that worked for me but that worked years ago. And really I'm a recruiter. I'm measured on the volume of applications received so why would I say such a thing? Well, that's because about 80% of jobs are filled through networking. Hang around InfoSec Twitter long enough and you'll see lots of people hiring, hiring for jobs that never make it onto a job board. And I'll be honest, I've tried to find attribution for this figure, it gets thrown around a lot um, and it, there isn't really a good source for it, but it's one of those numbers where everyone says, yeah, that makes sense. So you could say networking is kind of a big deal. At the start of my career, I was laid off and unemployed for three months. My mom kept telling me that finding a job was a full-time job. I was, you know, at that time, the internet was at the library, and I was there five days a week, multiple hours a day. I applied to hundreds of jobs, and I didn't get very many interviews, but I was consumed with figuring out this process, trying to hack the code so I could mask effectively enough to get a job. I became obsessed with figuring this out. And that was my first introduction into just how broken recruiting is as a business process. Applying online can take upwards of 15 minutes per application with a low success rate. This talk is about the ROI of your time. Invest it in building your professional network your way. That said, if you're actively seeking a job, meaning unemployed, do allocate some of your time to applying online. It's kind of like diversifying your financial portfolio. You know, you never want to put all of your baskets in one place, but when it comes to that ROI, networking has a higher return. So think of your job hunt as a hack. How do you bypass or really leverage recruiters like me? And remember, it's about making friends with your future coworkers too. So for me, this idea started with Hacking Hired because in part I love alliteration, but mainly because it's a system to explain and make something manageable that has complexities. This process isn't known for its transparency and probably when you're about to hack a box, that box doesn't seem very transparent either. Getting hired is like getting inside, hacking the box. And in another talk, I go into more depth into these four primary attack vectors, but I think it helps to give them some context here. People vectors include different types of recruiters and different types of hiring managers. Organizations as a vector because different sizes of companies in different industries operate differently. And the tech vector includes job boards, applicant tracking systems, that type of thing. And tools like your resume and social presence make the tools vector. 
For this talk, we're going to talk about OSINT for people and orgs and OPSEC for tools and tech. This talk will focus on these two processes in order to help make a daunting search into something more manageable. As a refresher, OPSEC is a process that identifies info and how that info might be interpreted or leveraged by others and then takes steps to eliminate or reduce the exploitation. In this context, I'm considering each of us as our own autonomous en entity. The OPSEC process gives us a framework to examine the entity and in this case, ourselves. Who do I think I am? How do others perceive me? How do I want to be perceived? What actions can I take to that goal? And really, it's a five-step process. It starts with identifying the critical info, analyzing the threat, analyzing the vulnerability, analyzing the risk, and applying countermeasures. So the first step, identifying that critical info, is the information which other people will take to use in order to take action against you or for you. So take stock of your skills and gaps, know your own strengths, focus on your strengths. Your strengths are your marketability. Ask those around you if you need to, but focus on the good. Share your strengths. They are what will you will leverage in order to get that job. And I, uh, I want to reiterate too that you're, when you're looking at yourself, you also want to look at your social presence. And actually Jake Williams posted about this quite recently and I asked him if I could include this in my talk. But this was a tweet thread where he was uh, going into some detail about what this means. So this recent tweet is from the CTO of BreachQuest and Rendition InfoSec. During an interview with a job seeker, the job seeker used the Punisher logo as their avatar in Zoom. Jake points out that any logo or, or any background with skulls or violence is off-putting. And as CTO, he has to consider his customer in every decision, not just the customer, but your future teammates. Jo J excuse me, Jake points out that these types of things will limit your career opportunities. And so as much as you might be thinking, I want to work for a cool team and a cool team will accept me, that team also has to think about their customer. So the other thing is that the recruiters are probably looking you up too. Years ago, before I got into InfoSec recruiting, I was in corporate talent acquisition. And one afternoon, the HR director pulled us into a boardroom for an emergency talk. One of my teammates had extended an offer to an inside salesperson that had been featured on the local news for scamming about seven grand from a sweet old lady. When we Googled him, there it was the first thing that came up. Multiple videos, multiple segments from the local news. Our clients also look up our salespeople, so this was a non-starter. So do know that your recruiters are looking up too. We call them gatekeepers or we call them headhunters. You'll be well served to learn the difference. So when considering the people who can take action against you, there are more than one type of recruiter. There's a talent acquisition or corporate recruiters. They are screening hard for culture fit and long-term commitment. And they're often bound by the minimum requirements in a job posting. Uh, they get audited for the types of candidates and the interview process that is uh, performed. And then there's agency recruiters who, like the internal recruiters, are working for the hiring manager, but they may have freedom to act in your best interests as well. They may consider you a client as well, too. The thing to know about agency recruiters, though, is that they really are recruiting for entry level or junior talent, but they are a wealth of knowledge about the industry and customers that are out there. So the other side of this is that there's also a difference between hiring managers and how hiring managers screen an interview, depending on whether they are technical or not. Either way, they are the ones and hiring, and that's where you want to focus your efforts. It's also important to consider the types of organizations. So a technical manager and a non-technical manager may view certifications differently, and they may go about the interview process in different ways as well. And then with types of organizations, there's a big difference between a large enterprise and a small to medium sized business or startup. Large enterprises are very risk adverse and they have extensive processes and uh, rules in place with a lot of compliance they need to follow. Whereas small to medium sized businesses and startups are considered more agile. So there's a little bit more flexibility. However, a large enterprise may have the budget and staff in order to hire more entry level people 
but a small to medium sized business might choose more entry level. This is all about doing the research, which we'll talk about later. So using myself as an example, which are you? I have changed my career five times and I'm, I'm not that old, but it is a very common thing to choose, change your career. Most recently it was from sales to recruiting and it wasn't easy, even though I had recruiting experience. I kept getting calls for sales roles. It was frustrating. So I worked with a coach who pointed out that my LinkedIn and my resume needed to be cohesive. I was including both the inside sales and the recruiting on my resume. I was thinking about it in a very traditional way of uh, all of my experience. But which was I? Was I sales or recruiting? Was I a flight risk as a recruiting hire? Say I got a recruiting job and then I was reached out to about a fancy sales job. Would I bail? My resume raised too many questions and to recruiters and hiring managers, questions often look like concerns. Make sure you're conveying yourself with clarity. In another example, I have spoken with countless people looking to move into leadership. The accomplishments of an operator or a contributor are often different than those of a manager. You need to be able to convey your leadership accomplishments. And also, leaders talk about project size and budget, sizes of team and infrastructure. Scale matters here. There's also a common expectation of executive style and presence on social media and in your resume. Many people choose to work with a coach for this very reason. Now moving to analysis of vulns, this isn't about beating yourself up. It, now we often think about vulnerabilities as weaknesses. Weaknesses can be areas of opportunity as well. The goal here is to prepare yourself and to know yourself. Like for example, do you need structure or flexibility? Would you be better uh, enjoying an enterprise or a startup? And what do you need in a workplace or a manager? These are all important questions to consider. And when taking a risk assessment, we're looking at probability and impact examined, uh, cross-examined by levels of threat and vulnerability. This is where the culmination of your work and the doc and your documentation of your process is important. This is where it all comes together. Only you can make these determinations, but it's okay to ask for feedback. While only you know the details of your situation, this often works best when you work with someone else like a mentor, coach, or buddy. It's easier to get the full picture when we have another set of eyes. So for example, uh, maybe you're casting yourself or spreading yourself too thin by casting a wide net. Um, so often in security, we, uh, we, we say that we can, you know, study to cross six different disciplines. Well, which discipline is your uh, passion? Where, you know, where do you want to focus? Sometimes it can be beneficial to focus on one discipline in order to really convey that cohesive picture. And then are you tracking your activity to ensure that what you're doing is being effective? You know, if you always go to this one meetup, but you've never made a good connection out of that meetup, maybe don't go to that meetup anymore and find another use for your time. Next, you can apply measures or specifically action control. For example, I removed my sales roles from my resume and my LinkedIn profile, and I continue to, to look for ways to communicate myself with clarity. I researched my industry, recruiting, and how to advance, what career paths look like, and I worked hard to make sure I was succeeding in every role I had. And then I also took a certification course so I could learn. The goal of that course for me was about learning the skills I needed for my job, not just about three letters at the end of my name. So that's kind of a lot in the first half, huh? OPSEC for job hunting is about knowing yourself and knowing the players in, in the game so you know what kind of prize you want. Now let's all take a breath and I'm going to check in and see if there's any questions. Uh, no, there's no questions. <laughs> okay, okay. Some, sometimes so, there's not. Uh, no worries. No. The, <laughs> although, um, I must say that, that we have got some good comments so far. So, uh, okay. Yeah, that uh, Stacey has liked your your graphics. Uh, they like the fact that that um, uh, you you quoted um, from from the internet, which which, which was good. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I don't see any okay. uh, any questions just yet. Um, so no we've got some some 
good 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 comments so but yeah so okay. we can take this moment to to have a breath in and out and, and then we can continue um yeah i uh, just a reminder if, if there are any questions please just dump them in the chat and, and i'll ask away all right, thank you, Alan, and thanks okay. everyone. I really appreciate the kind words. Um, I, it's a, it can be a lot to do self-reflection, so I wanted to make sure we take that moment to pause. But diving back in and taking another look at these vectors as a, a reminder, you know, these are really just all components to the process that you can uh, take a look at and analyze. So the reality is, I mean, I struggle with networking. It's not that I'm an extrovert, I just play one on TV. Many of us struggle with networking, and this is another one of those figures on the internet that doesn't really have any attribution, but they say 38% of people find it difficult to maintain their business relationships. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure it's a lot higher than that. With OPSEC and OSENT, you can inform your networking and make it your advantage. So what is OSINT? Well, OSINT is open source intelligence that is a process of collecting, analyzing, and making decisions about about data that is accessible in publicly available sources. So it's a process of collecting is another way of saying that, uh, you know, documentation, documentation, documentation. And it's about doing your research. We talked about how important networking is and it's definitely a challenge. This research can help make your networking intentional and purposeful. Number one here, again, don't break any laws. Don't violate anyone's privacy. With great power comes great responsibility. Consider your end goal. We are humans having a human experience. Keep that in focus. Build relationships that are memorable in a positive way and don't violate anyone's privacy. It's a journey and not a destination. Networking is both the long game and immediate games. Listen more and ask more questions. Write down their answers. You might think it's memorable, but you'll be surprised how much data gets lost as you push through on this search. And always add value, like with positivity, gratitude, and kindness. Givers truly gain. So make a plan. Work your plan. What big companies are in your area? Do those companies have established security teams? What kind of roles do they hire for? Do they ever hire for entry level or junior or even the thing that you're passionate about like maybe um, disaster recovery or forensics who leads those teams do they have social media are they speaking at an event soon those kinds of things could be your in for starting a conversation and again research document research document and this meme this is really why it matters I talked about that advice that goes around so often of just apply. I hear it all the time. And I understand that a lot of it is based in the fact that women tend to undervalue themselves. I think that every woman is uh, deserved every job. But the fact is we are fighting against this tidal wave. And so if you have the spare time, you know, go ahead and apply online. If you have a full-time job search, definitely apply online. Finding a job is a full-time job. But again, this is about the value of your time and the effectiveness of actions. And really, I think it's just a giant pep talk to encourage us all to make more friends. So hopefully by now, you're excited to get out there and network and we're all on our way, right? So on job hunting tools, I've mentioned documentation a few times. By documenting today, you're contributing to your future success. Uh, I like to say, you know, uh, future Rachel is happy because of something that today Rachel did, right? And so there's, you know, common traditional ways like Excel or Sheets or Asana or Trello. Uh, I was recently recommended the website Hunter with, without an E. Hunter is essentially like an Asana or Trello, but it's already built out for job searching and they have a freemium level. So if you don't know where to get started, that's a great tool. From a research standpoint, LinkedIn, Twitter, Meetup, Eventbrite, even YouTube, those are all your assets. And then all of the job boards are an asset as well. 
uh, it's really just important to track your work and your ROI. Keep track of who you're reaching out to and, and what ways you can build a, report, uh, build a rapport with those people. And that also enables you to do something like an AAR, which is an after action report. So say you go to a networking event or you uh, you know attending Diana Initiative, uh, you keep track of who you talked to and what talks you went to and um, some of the things you learned. And that lets you uh, keep track of who you wanna keep reaching out to and building those relationships with. And as you dig into your markets research, look for the helpers. As Mr. Rogers always says, who's offering? Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, even Facebook, and I'll say it, even the clock app, are blessed with InfoSec creators giving their time and knowledge. These creators may not be hiring themselves, but they may share info and jobs. It seems like you might be goofing off being on Twitter all day, but it also could get you the advantage to be one of the first applicants in a, a brand new opening. Over time, you will identify technical managers and your network will grow. Follow hashtags, create Google alerts, look for the helpers. They want to see you get in this career as well. So make a process, work a process. OPSEC and OSINT are a process. So you can work this process. One of the ways that you could do that is by defining and refining your ideal job profile. So by knowing who you are, you can know what kind of job you're looking for. And you can define and refine your ideal team profile. Do the research to find out who and which companies align for that and then what hiring managers are at those companies. Personally reach out to them, personally reach out to the helpers and aim for manageable daily goals. Track that work so you can get your ROI. And I'm sure many of us have heard about SMART goals before, uh, but I, I think it's a great format. You know, you're talking about specific, measurable, attainable, time relevant, and uh, relevant and time-based, right? SMART. And you'll need to personalize these for your, your goals and your situation. So for example, if you're active, actively looking, you are probably gonna spend more time every day, five days, away, five days a week. And you might have a goal of one new solid connection a day, you know, something really reasonable. Um, and then, you know, maintaining and following up on previous ones as you go along. If you're passively looking, it's good to still be active. I've heard CISOs talk about being active uh, like 15 minutes a day on LinkedIn and reaching out to someone you previously worked with or previously connected with in order to maintain that connection. One of the things about LinkedIn as a networking and job board site is that by being active every day, LinkedIn's algorithms pay attention to your activity and your profile will rank higher in their searches when you are active on their site on a regular basis. So for example, me as a recruiter, when I go to search for candidates, the candidates that have been active on LinkedIn more recently will show up higher in my search results. And Let's see, this goes to the connection cycle. So when we're talking about networking and interpersonal relationships, there's a connection cycle. And I know that this is something that neurodiverse people like myself often struggle with. It's really easy for us to feel very close to someone we haven't talked to in years, um, but not everyone thinks that way. Um, so, you know, learning to be purposeful in maintaining our relationships is really key. So this cycle of maintaining re relationships is uh, is something that can support uh, is once you have your research and documentation, you can make it actionable with these kinds of methods. So this is one way suggested here. You start by breaking the ice, reaching out, including some kind of give. Now, gives can sound really big, but it could be something as simple as a genuine compliment, or you know you've shared their post and and made some uh, nice comments on your your post when you shared it, right? That helps them, especially if they're a content creator, right? So that's some kind of give give or warm reception that you've done, and then you can follow up with an ask if you have one. You don't necessarily have to have an ask on the first time you reach out, uh, but if you do, make sure that it is specific, actionable, and small. You never want to start with a really big ask. Um, this is similar to SMART goals when you're thinking about writing asks. And then be sure to reciprocate. So, uh, you know, give another compliment, be gracious, uh, or, you know, if they end up landing you a job, consider gifting them a, a digital coffee or a digital book. And then repeat, right? It's a connection cycle. Rinse, uh, rinse lather, and repeat. 
Keep in mind though, we are all humans here and we are all navigating full lives. So be sure to minimize any expectations you have of others. Uh, when you're looking to build your network, don't do so out of a place of expectations. It's always good to uh, consider that the other person has that full life. And of course, always do your best and be kind. So like I said, givers gain. If you can help another person along the way, you're building strength in your network. Even if that person is another junior person, you never know, uh, you know, they might not be your hiring manager today, but they might end up being your hiring manager tomorrow. So always remember to do your best for others as well. And yes, networking is a skill. It can feel awkward. And when you keep practicing, then you too can be a Frisbee dog. I mean, I wanna be a Frisbee dog when I grow up, right? But like any skill, it can be mastered. As we wrap up, remember that OPSEC and OSINT are tools that you can leverage in the four attack vectors to hack your way to hired. You can hack organizations. You wanna consider the right kind of team for you, who hires and for what in your area or even remotely, and who even hires for your ideal role. You can hack people like the different types of recruiters, the different types of hiring managers and content creators who are, are out there helping people like you and me get farther in our careers. So if you take one thought from this talk, I hope it's this, I should start networking. At this point, I'm open to any other questions if we have questions now. Uh, yes, yes, uh, we, we actually have a couple of questions, which is good. Uh, just just to, to uh, yeah, the most difficult bit about doing a, a virtual talk is that you, you're sitting there and you have no idea, but uh, I'm busy watching all the comments here and I'm getting a lot of good feedback, um, positive, not just not just questions, but a lot of people saying, wow, the especially the memes uh, resonated with them and, and yeah, so, so so well done for, for picking those out. Uh, but yes, okay, let's let's jump into it. So uh, the first question I got was from uh, Sudo uh, and the question is thoughts on using bots to manage the tedious parts of a job hunt. Um, maybe even wider than that too. are there ways that you can automate uh the boring bits of of job hunting yeah so i'm um i'm i probably have like a pretty high level understanding of bots and scripting but i mm -hmm. would imagine there's definitely ways that you could go about it i know some of the um there's even some job boards that are called job aggregators and they are essentially bots that scrape jobs from other websites um, so there's definitely ways that you can use it. Um, I'm sure, you know, Twitter's a great example. If you've identified hiring managers, you want to keep an eye out, right? So maybe you can have a bot that um, triggers, uh, triggers uh, retweeting a, a hiring manager once every week or something like that. Like, or, you know, you maybe don't want to be the person that retweets <laughs> them every single time, right? But having some type of iterative process in there. Um, I imagine, you know, similar to RSS, RSS feeds um, and Google alerts, there's a type a form of scripting that you could do to um, keep track of updates. So maybe a, a hiring manager doesn't constantly post updates on their LinkedIn, uh, but when they do, it's about a job, right? And so, you know, you want to keep an eye on, uh, on that hiring manager for when they post updates. Um, that's a, a great instance. Sometimes the recruiter posts the job, uh, but it's the hiring manager that's behind it. So maybe you could put bots on the recruiters and uh, and, and see that update, and then you know to go and, and check out that. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of ways that you could use bots, and it's something I'm, I have a just a minor familiarity with, but I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of creative ideas we could talk about. Great okay, idea. Uh Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I have a following question of that, but I'll keep my questions for the end. Uh, so the, the next question came from uh, Stacy. Um, this did, this question did come in, I think, before the slide where you, where you started to deal with this, but I'll, I'll read the question. Um, how do you even break the ice? In my head, I always imagine the people I want to reach out to have a million messages and I'm just another one. How do I stand out? That's a great 
point. Um, not every first message will uh, will maybe be responded to, right? So um, keep in mind that you might not always get a response, and that's okay. Um, so it, it's uh, it, you know it, start with that, right? So you know have a, a tempered uh, expectation out of it that that will help. Um, but you know as the first message, you know, hi, I'm Rachel. I saw your ex post about blah 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 or I you know really am interested in your company and I thought I would introduce myself because I'd like to get to know more about what you look for in your team right so you might not be hiring today but um, I'd love to hear a, a couple of thoughts on what you do hire for when you do hire and they may not respond, um, but they might. You might pique their interest, and it's it, for me. It comes back to looking for the helpers. So you kind of have to uh, take your odds in reaching out. And you might not know if they are open to it right away, but if you're you're kind and nice, you're going to find those people that are. And I think one of the things that has really impressed me about this industry is that most of the people in this industry want to help people get into the industry. Um, they may, you know, they may not have the time right then and there, um, but usually if they can help, they want to help. Uh, so, you know, you, you give it a shot and you try, but I would say maybe, you know, eight to nine, 10, eight to nine times out of 10, you'll probably hit a successful. And if you're looking to build your confidence doing that, I would start with those content creators, those helpers, right? Um, you know, there's folks that have, they post on Twitter, but they also run a, a Twitch stream, right? So going to a live event that they have that helps break the ice because that's a time that they have scheduled for that kind of conversation. And then sometimes hiring managers show up to that. Uh, you know, they, they go to other networking events like this and it gives you a chance to make that connection. Hopefully that uh, helps answer that for you, Stacey. Okay, I'm, I'm going to skip over, um, De Daphne's got a good question, but uh, um, I just want to uh, uh, go to Jared's question because it is related. Um, and Jared's question is, do, do, you have, uh, do you have any suggestions on how to reach out specifically on LinkedIn to, to individuals? Yeah, um, so there's a couple of options. LinkedIn likes to uh, sell in mails, right? Um, if you pay for premium, you get a certain number of in-mails a month included in premium. So that's an option. Um, I think if you're going to use an in-mail, um, one of the principles I learned in sales is that um, it helps if you, uh, if, you know, if you're going to, you have a target, right? You have a hiring manager you're looking at. It helps if you do more than one action. So you found them, you found their profile, they recently posted about an update about their company, and uh, so you've liked the update, you've commented on their post, you possibly send them a connection request with a nice note, um, and you could consider sending them an email as well. If you feel like they might be more formal and it would be too casual to request a connection, you can like their post, comment on their post, and send them an email, in giving them more context of, "Hey, I'm Rachel. I, you know, it's really exciting to see that news about your company's growth, and I'm looking to build my network so that I can." further my career in information security. I would love to hear your thoughts on getting into the field and learn more about whether or not you're hiring for your team. Uh, please let me know if, if, we'd be, uh, if you'd be open to connecting, right? So the big thing is uh, multiple touch points, right? So you're giving them that compliment, you're engaging with their public post, uh, but then also following up and, and starting a private conversation as well. Okay. Um, now to to Daphne's question. Um, okay. So ba basically, it would be advice on on titles. Uh, so so the question is: I pivoted now. I pivoted and now have six years of cybersecurity experience. Uh, there are relatively few titles in cybersecurity. Um, so there's CISO, architect, engineer, analyst, um, and uh, Daphne is building tech experience, but has no cybersec title that really captures 
uh, the, uh, the 15 years of pe previous experience. Um, how can you optimize a, a title for, for someone like that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and actually, uh, I think it's one of the biggest reasons that recruiting can be such a challenge for recruiters, because if you think about it, you know, recruiters were used to like in the finance industry, right? There's accounts payable and receivable, there's a, a controller, then there's the uh, CFO, right? I mean, I'm simplifying it, but there's a, a clear progression in, in that industry. Whereas in security, there there's a sort of, you know, you've identified what there essentially is, but historically, you know, there, there really weren't those titles for, <clears throat> excuse me, many people that were building their careers. And in some organizations, a security analyst is doing engineering work, um, whereas an engineer is doing analyst work. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it, it can be a little muddled, right? And, and so it's definitely a challenge. I want to caveat my answer by saying I don't encourage anyone to lie. Um, you know, you, you want to be truthful in your resumes. Um, but there is some finessing that you can do when it comes to job titles. Uh, you know, as long as that job title is a truthful reflection of the work that you contributed and what you've done there. Uh, a resume is an advertisement. It's not a legal job application where, um, you know, you know, legal job application is can be verified against employment verification, that kind of thing. Your resume is your sales point, right? So there is some finessing you can do there. Um, I would look at the components of what you contributed and how the components of what you contributed, your accomplishments there, and how those align to those titles of like analyst, architect, that kind of thing. The other side of that is I would look at the job to which you're applying to, because quite frankly, a recruiter is doing this in their head and saying, okay, I need 10 years of experience and I need XYZ technologies, right? So your resume wants to say, I have 10 years of experience in these technologies. You can put that right in the summary on top. Um, but then with the job titles, uh, you know, there is some things you can do to pull out, uh, you know, if you, if you didn't feel comfortable changing your job titles, the other thing you can do is add on to it. So you could say security analyst dash, you know, the actual job title you were doing, right? So you can kind of add into that space. There's some room there to do that. Hopefully that helps answer your question. Okay, uh, the next question comes from Gina and I, I can actually answer this one. So it says, are you going to put this talk online? Uh, we are recording it and my understanding is that it will be made available online at some stage, so yeah. Hi Gina, <laughs> thanks for being here. <laughs> um, Okay, <laughs> uh, <laughs> moving along. Uh, so uh, uh, CJ has a question. Um, I heard it's a good idea to look up a person on LinkedIn and do some research on them before an interview. Yeah. Uh, what do you think is the best thing to learn about the interviewer and how would you suggest bringing it up in an interview without deterring from the interview's purpose? Yeah, so... Um some of the things that I have seen and pointed out, um, a foreign study. So if uh, you know if they uh, studied overseas, uh, that's you know something you can point out. Or if you have a, a similar alma mater, or if you um, you know once upon a time worked at the same company or in the same industry, um, when you're calling out something like that the end goal here it's kind of like social engineering the end goal is to build that relationship right um so you're you're looking to build rapport or connection so um ideally you're looking for something that you can say oh that person's like me or i like that sport too or i studied that language as well um, sometimes it's not going to be there, right? Um, you know, there's no guarantees on that. Um, but, you know, maybe they went to a university that you really respect or that you like the sports team. Um, 
you know, you can you can find it's essentially the goal here is to find something you can compliment them on. Um, I, you know, I once uh, had an interview with a recruiter, and I you know found her Twitter, and she had recently started shopping with Imperfect, and I just started shopping with Imperfect, and so it was a a little note that uh, you know she was po posting it publicly, um, but it was you know it was like oh you know I, I wanted to make sure I knew who I was you know interviewing with, and I looked at your LinkedIn, I looked at your Twitter, and you know, I, I, how are you liking Imperfect? I just started with Imperfect as well. And she was so excited. She loves Imperfect. It was a you know, whole little moment of, of bonding on that. So um, you know, you can give it context like, hey, I, I, I wanted to be prepared. And so I, I looked on LinkedIn and I, I wanted to get to know you a little bit better. And I saw X, Y, and Z. And I think that's so great, right? So using it as a way to build a bond with someone. Okay, um, that's that's all the questions that I've got. Um, so I uh, just yeah, very good positive feedback from from everyone. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah uh, I think that's yeah. It. I w I just want to wrap up here. I want to yeah. thank everyone for coming and listening to me jabber on. Um, if I can use this experience in recruiting to help others get farther, uh, that's that's my goal. I want to encourage you to increase your return on investment. I know spending a time finding a job is a lot of work. Uh, I can't fix recruiting, but I, it can encourage people like you. Um, I want to thank you for coming to my talk and remember that each instance and each interaction is unique in some way and it's up to you to hack it. And I also want to thank all of our sponsors for coming today. So thank you very much and thank you, Alan, as well. And thank you everyone who's here today to listen. <laughs> thank you, Rachel, very much.